What's going on, beautiful people? It is I, your flying locomotive and faster than a speeding bullet, Supercliff, coming at you live with a brand new video. And for today's video, we are continuing onward with Marvel's Mr. Fantastic. That being, of course, Mr. Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil, issue number two, the second part of the fifth story arc. But before we get into Daredevil, Hell's Kitchen, and everything involving people getting the crap kicked out of them, if you are new to the channel, then smash that like and subscribe button. That way, you guys never miss out on anything that's happening on this majestic channel. Also, my goal is to reach a thousand subs by the end of the year, and we are two subs away. Like, holy sweet pineapple sauce. That's amazing. So if you guys could sub, that would be awesome. Thus, without further ado, let's jump into the gritty action world of Daredevil, issue number two. Our story starts off with a flashback, with us seeing a young Robert Goldman, who, FYI in the previous issue, was revealed to be Matt Murdock's guardian angel, which is pretty creepy if you stop and think about it. So yeah, here in this flashback, we see a young Robert sort of realizing the power that he has, and it turns out that he's not technically an angel. He's not the traditional Christian version of what we think an angel looks like. Rather, there's a voice in his head who, which basically tells him when something bad and awful is about to happen. Now, at first, Robert goes through this phase of survivor's guilt, but over time, he learns to accept his power. And what he does is he uses the voice in his head to tell him on what can be done to help New York's savior stay on course. And yeah, you guessed it. New York's savior is Matt Murdock. It's freaking Daredevil. However, because Robert is making sure the city's savior is on the right track, it turns out that he does stuff that will affect Matt's day-to-day -day outcome. And a lot of it is um, pretty fucked. And the way Robert explains it is this. It's seemingly why Robert bumped into a stranger a week ago, only, only the point said stranger to the library, where that said person used the computers there to look up on how to build a bomb. Because this person whom Robert met, total stranger, whatever, hated this train. And with knowing that Kristen, who, you know, Matt was supposed to meet up with in the last issue, was going to board this train, it's why Robert allowed everything to happen the way it did. Because with Kristen now dead, it will now cause ripples, which will reforge Daredevil into a greater hero. Essentially, the way Robert views it, it's sort of like investing money, except you're paying a number of lives to die in order to save thousands more. It's really fucking weird, <laughs> but yeah, that's what both we and Matt are currently dealing with. So Matt's like, okay, Robert, you're a terrible person. I'm going to go now and save who I can. But as Matt tries to help out the situation with the destruction and all the rubble, he ends up getting trapped, which results with Robert telling Matt about, about the time when his purpose was revealed to him, back when he was studying law at Columbia University, where he met Matt and Foggy. For that was the moment when a voice inside Robert's head started to become more of an itch. Rather, urging Robert to do small things, it grew into something greater. For Robert's main purpose was fully revealed, he became a disciple to the book of Matthew Murdoch. And Robert's been doing this for a while now, ever since the day when Electra and her father were being held hostage at Columbia, years prior to when Matt became Daredevil, and many more before Electra became who she was today. Now, the reason why Electra doesn't do anything in the moment was because she was testing Matt. She was testing him for the hand. However, with Robert bearing witness as a bystander, the voice in his head tells him to start yelling out loud that they're killing the hostages, to which causes the SWATs to begin opening fire. And sadly, their bullets tear apart Electra's dad in the process. Thus, it was in this moment where everything changed for both of them. For both Matt and Electra, their heroism was forever locked on a new path. Electra's path took her away from recruiting Matt, whereas Matt's path took him into becoming Daredevil. And because of that day, it's made them both stronger. From there, Seeing that his job is finished, you know, at least for now, Robert walks away, leaving Daredevil to fend for himself. But don't worry, folk, because the majestic people of Hell's Kitchen come over to lend their assistance. And after a moment of New York coming together to lift rubble away from Matt, the people are successful, for they earn that W status, like a badass mofo. Thus, once Daredevil collects his bearings and is able to stand properly, the man of Hellfear makes his way towards the direction that Robert was last seen heading in, because Matt is planned to kick his ass. Now keep in mind folks, because at the moment, it's downpouring. Therefore, Daredevil's radar sense is currently going a bit airy, thereby making it harder for Matt to pick up on Robert's heartbeat. But he eventually does it, to which he finds Robert standing on top of a skyscraper that's being worked on. And we soon find out that Robert isn't nervous with Matt being able to locate him. In fact, he sort of kind of meant, meant for all this to happen, because it's here where the construction workers come back from lunch and begin to do what all site workers on the job do make a shit ton of noise. 
and add that to the rain, it's going to cause Daredevil Sensing to go berserk, thereby allowing Robert to make his escape. Though not before telling Matt that once more he is not here to kill Matt or himself, because at the end of the day, God isn't done with him. God isn't done with Matt Murdock. And very much in a Jesus made fashion, Goldman flings himself off the top of the roof, sending him down into the city streets. And yet Goldman also adds this God is ultimately merciful. So maybe, just maybe, she isn't dead after all, meaning Kristen isn't dead. And so once Matt hears that, he's like, WTF, and he immediately begins to rush back to the train station, where after using his radar senses, Matt finds a very much alive Kristen. Kristen lets Daredevil know that she was here earlier, but the train was out of service, so, you know, I left. But obviously I came back because of a shit show was going on. But Matt gets right to the point as he tells Kristen that he loves her, regardless if she has to stay or go. He wanted Kristen to know about his feelings, regardless. Sort of like a last goodbye kiss before he leaves to join the fist and marries Elektra, all in an effort to stop the hand once and for all. But the comic isn't done just yet, folks, because at the end of the day, inside New York's police station, we see Robert Goldman, very much alive, show up to confess to his train bobbing. Once the weirdo is handcuffed to a desk, from there he begins to raise his hands as, he's giving, as, he, as he gives the officer a heads up about him needing to be holed up in a special prison, because a special prison is where he'll need to be for him. And thus, Robert begins to glow. And that, folks, was the end of Daredevil Issue number two, or as the cool kids like to say at Marvel, a legacy number 650. And thank you guys for checking out my video, as it truly, truly means the world to me. So yeah, this issue was awesome. It kind of reminds me of something similar to Donny Cates, because Cates will typically do a creative take or a thing to a character that we that we thought of before to some extent, except Cates is the one who will actually do it. So yeah, and, I, and so I feel like we're getting that same sense of creativity storytelling with Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil. What's always been interesting about Daredevil and the world surrounding him is the fact that despite Matt being a lawyer, a guy in tights who's blind and kicks everyone's ass and, and someone who doesn't use condoms, <laughs> I always forget that the one main theme in Daredevil is Matt's religion, him being a Catholic and a, and a person of faith. And yet with every Daredevil story past post Frank Miller, Matt's faith is always put into question, but never is his faith being force fed down the reader's throat. Matt's faith is sort of used not so much as a definitive rule book, but a path of guidelines for want to achieve good. And yet here in the story, Chip takes the character of Robert Goldman, a, a guardian angel, and sort of asks the question through a metal contextual lens. Is religion and scripture to be followed step by step? Should we live our lives doing such? Or is it okay to live a life on one's own terms? Do we need a higher power or higher being, someone to worship in order to do what is right? Basically, there's a lot of theology happening here, and I'm all for it. Again, Chip is an amazing writer, and I think he is, and I think he has something very important to say within this arc. But yeah, as always, I'm your majestic sayer of words, Supercliff. And if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button, and also hit the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload, and so that you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited? For issue number three, let me know down in the comment section below. And until the next video, peace. Giggity goo. All right.